Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we will go through 15 sample questions and answer them in detail to help you prepare for the AI 100 Microsoft Azure AI Fundamentals exam. In case if you would like to purchase the entire set of practice questions, use the link in the description below. I request you to comment if you would like me to do this sample test for any other Azure certification and do subscribe, share and like the video. Let's get started. The first question, please select all options that are not the key elements of artificial intelligence. Well, object detection is one of the common techniques of computer vision for identifying and locating objects in an image or a video and is not a key element of artificial intelligence. So option D is correct. Also, automated machine learning is the process of automating the time-consuming, iterative task of machine learning and again, not a key element of artificial intelligence. When we say AI, we think about the creation of software that imitates human behavior. So all the remaining options are key elements of artificial intelligence. You created an AI solution Along with solution deployment, you provided information about the solution's possibilities and limitations. Which principle of responsible AI did you comply? As intelligent applications become more prevalent in our daily lives, Microsoft has identified six guiding principles for responsible AI development and all six of them are mentioned in the answer choices. Well, the correct answer is the principle of transparency as it helps people to understand how to use AI solutions, their behavior, possibilities and limitations. The principle of fairness is about reducing bias such that the AI will provide the same recommendation for anyone with similar social or financial characteristics. Reliability and safety make sure that the AI systems respond safely in unanticipated situations and operate reliably as per the original expectations. Privacy and security are about protecting important personal and business information. The principle of inclusiveness makes sure that the developers understand and address Potential barriers that could unintentionally exclude a section of people, for example, those with disabilities. And finally, accountability is about making sure that humans are still responsible and accountable on how these highly autonomous AI systems operate and touch human lives. You are working for a car dealership and your boss ask you for information on how many blue cars to order for the next quarter. You create an unsupervised machine learning model. Will this help you to achieve your goal? Well, your task is to provide a numeric prediction, the number of blue cars to order. And this can be achieved by creating a regression model which will predict the value based on the historical sales data from previous quarters. This regression model is a supervised machine learning model because you provide the labeled data as well, in this case the number of blue cars, so the model just learns the true relationship between the input data and the labels. Unsupervised models are a bit different in the sense that you will not have any data labels. So your task will not be to predict value based on past data, but to help you uncover natural clusters in the dataset, which for example is used by marketing people to discover customer segments so that they can target each segment differently. You are working for a car dealership. Your boss asks you to forecast whether the new car model will be successful or not. This model has a variety of engine improvements like comfortable seats, sunroofs and etc. The question is, what should you do in the pre-processing data stage that would help you to predict the success of the new model? Well, during pre-processing, you work with data to select features that influence the label prediction. In this case, features or the characteristics of the car like seats, etc. Once you narrow down your features, you would select training and test set 
keep aside data for model evaluation and so on. You created a classification model with four possible classes. What will be the size of the confusion matrix? A confusion matrix is a table that describes the performance of a classification model. This matrix compares the actual value of the label in the dataset against the predicted value by the model. So for example here, there were a total of 60 nos in the original dataset but the classifier correctly predicted only 50 of them as a no. The other 10 instances were wrongly predicted as yes. For two classes in the dataset, such as this example, the size of the confusion matrix is 2 by 2. And for four classes, the size of the matrix will be 4 by 4. When you prepare data for model training, you use your domain knowledge to select labels, features and scale and normalize them. What is the generic name for the process that includes all the steps mentioned above? Well, the umbrella term for selecting labels, features, scaling and normalization is called featureization. So that's the right answer. Option A is incorrect because selecting features is called feature selection and is one of the elements of featureization. Options B and E are incorrect too because they are also one of the elements of featureization. Option C is incorrect because model training is the next step after featureization. What are the four types of compute resources that you can use in Azure Machine Learning Studio? Select all that apply. If you go to Azure Machine Learning and launch the studio, under compute section, you can see all four different types of compute resources that you can create. Here, you can create a CPU or a GPU based compute instance and select a virtual machine size to suit your needs. Or if you need auto scaling, you can create a cluster of compute nodes. Here, you specify the minimum and the maximum number of nodes for the job execution. The third option is inference cluster where you can either create or use an existing Azure Kubernetes cluster for deploying your models. Finally, you have the attached compute so you can bring your own compute like VMs or Databricks or Data Lake Analytics for processing. So the correct answer will be all four options we just discussed. You created a custom vision model and want your model to detect trained objects on the photos. What information will you get about each object if you are using an object detection model? Please select all that apply. Well, in an object detection model, which is a form of computer vision, we get three different data points. First is the class of each object and then each object's probability score and finally the coordinates of the bounding box for each object. So options B, D and E are the right answers. An application scans a document with many pages. It returns the page information, the line information and the number of words for each line with a confidence level. Which API does the application use to scan the document? Well, the question talks about the APIs in the computer vision service. There are two APIs in the computer vision service. First one is the OCR API, which is designed for extraction of small amounts of text in images. Use this API to extract text from images where the text characters are only a few. Or in other words, use only when the image is not text dominant. The read API is specifically designed to extract text from images which are considered text dominant. So images which are scanned documents is a better use case for read API. Since the question talks about scanning documents with many pages, read API would be the most suitable solution. You created a custom vision model using the custom vision portal. What information do you need to provide to developers to use this model? Please select all that apply. 
If you create a cognitive service to train and publish the custom vision model, you can provide a cognitive service endpoint and a cognitive service key to the developers for accessing the model. But if you use the custom vision portal, you will have two separate resources for training and publishing a model. In this case, you need to provide four pieces of information to the developers. The project ID, model name, prediction key and the prediction endpoint. You work at the hotel chain and apply natural language processing for sentiment analysis of customer reviews. What sentiment score should you expect for the review? The prices were ridiculously high. We could stay at the palace for that price. The water in the shower was cold. No hot water whatsoever. Well, this obviously sounds like a bad review. So, sentiment analysis produces sentiment score between 0 and 1. A score close to 0 means a negative sentiment and a score close to 1 is positive sentiment. And in cases where you have neutral or undefined sentiments, the score would be around 0.5. So in this problem, the review is negative, so we should expect a score close to 0, so option E. What are the four types of entities that you can create during the authoring of the Lewis application? First, let's understand some terminology around Lewis applications. There are three important terms to know. They are intent, entity and utterance. Whatever the user asks is the utterance. So for the query, what's the weather like in Seattle tomorrow, the entire sentence is utterance. Based on utterance, you have the intent which represents the action the application should take. So intent for this example is to check for weather. An utterance can have only one intent but many entities which actually modify an intent. Think of entities as metadata for intents. For this example, you have location and time as entities. Well, that was some foundational knowledge and coming back to the actual question, we need to identify four types of entities that you can create during the authoring of Lewis applications or rather four types of metadata that you can create. Well, the answers are machine learned, list, regex and pattern.any. Go through the documentation to understand what they are and how they work. What components do you need to create a simple web chat bot? Select all that apply. To create a simple web chat bot such as that you see in the image here, which is a typical example of how user support queries are resolved, you just need two components. A knowledge base of existing FAQ documents or question and answer pairs. This is usually built with some NLP model so that the bot can understand a question that's phrased in multiple ways. And the second is a bot service that acts as an interface to the knowledge base through channels, for example, a chat interface. So the options B and D. Options A and C are incorrect because entities and utterances are parts of Lewis authoring and not that of web chat bot. Options E and F are incorrect as Lewis and text analytics are NLP services and not a component of web chat bot. You want to build a personal virtual assistant. What service will you use to connect your assistant with various input channels and devices? As the image shows here, you need Azure Bot service to connect various input channels and devices to build a virtual assistant. You build a bot using the bot framework and the Azure Bot service. If you want to extend the capabilities of your bot, which of the following will you use? Well, have a look at this diagram here. We have a user who interacts with a root bot which is nothing but a user facing bot. And these bots are also called skill consumers because they call and consume one or more skills. 
and a skill is also a bot that can perform a set of tasks for another bot. So what they are doing here is enhancing the capabilities of a root bot by consuming specific set of skills from another bot. So the skills which looks and behaves like a regular bot are reusable building blocks that can extend the functionality of an existing bot and is the right answer to the question. Custom Vision is one of the computer vision services and language translation and text to speech are natural language processing services and they can potentially extend bot functionality as part of a skill. Options C and F are incorrect as chit chat and FAQ documents are part of creating a knowledge base for QA maker. Once you are done, submit the test and you can verify your performance from the result. Also, you get the performance report domain wise. So you can analyze the questions for any particular domain and you will see all the questions related to that domain, their correct answers and explanations for each question and also links to the Microsoft documentation in case you like to learn the concept in depth. So if you want to clear the AI 100 exam, check the description for the link to the entire practice test. Roughly there are 110 questions that cover the length and breadth of all the objectives in the exam. Also please comment if you would like me to do the sample test for any other IJO certification and do subscribe, share and like the video.